I want to find out from our next guest if we are continuing on the right track. Kerry Allen is joining us. She's the efforts put uh, Kerry Allen's efforts to put agriculture and the primary sector back on the radar for secondary school pe- people. Excuse me for secondary school pupils is starting to pay dividends, providing the sector with a growing pool of young talent that risked drying up several years ago. Alan has been Agribusiness uh, Curriculum Director at St Paul's Collegiate School in Hamilton for the past three years, uh, and is, thanks to her efforts, the college pioneered New Zealand's first secondary school agribusiness course. Kerry joins us now. Good evening. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. I'm very excited to talk to you, Kerry. I know that you've been heavily involved uh, in the Ag and Ed program, part of Farmers Weekly, and of course uh, a lot across the board to bring agriculture into the curriculum of New Zealand, but still with a lot of challenges that we would like to hear about. Firstly, what has been one of your you know, biggest wins that you have seen uh, in your time within this, this role? Um, good evening, Sarah. Um, our, my biggest win probably is being able to uh, be actively involved in the agribusiness program and taking that out to as many schools across New Zealand as we can. Uh, last year, 93 schools did some form of NCA using the agribusiness program. So um, for me, that's really exciting uh, to have some schools that weren't uh, initially involved in agriculture and horticultural science, but are coming from it from a commerce type uh, background. And so just broadening our horizons and getting access in, um, to more students and showcasing what the primary sector has to offer. When so you, that's probably the biggest one. When you're talking to those HODs in economics and science, that value add of bringing an agribusiness and agri-science into that curriculum understanding, do they, do they see that added value? Uh, yes, mostly. Uh, it does depend on um, where they are and how we can relate it. But I'm pretty sure that every uh, secondary school in the country can relate uh, some form of agriculture and horticultural um, economy to their school. So we try to look at local uh, industries in the local area and try to get them to go to field trips, um, integrate guest speakers and use whatever resources are in their local community to be able to give those students those insights um, of those primary products um, and their businesses. And that's a big thing uh, to pick up on is resources. It's a very resource heavy topic and, but there is yes. a lot of resources out there and trying to coordinate them all into a curriculum must be a real challenge. Uh, yes, it is. But I'm very big on um, allowing students to a, have choice, but also be able to do things that are of interest to them. So for me, um, learning lots of different primary um, products or uh, learning about a lot of different sectors is very worthwhile. So trying to draw that all together and and having something of interest to the students. So if they can see um, jobs at the end of some learning or they can see all the different prosper, uh, prospects uh, right through the value chain or right through the sector, um, then that is yeah, adding so much more enrichness and experience for them. What is, um, I mean, in, this, in the heads of a 15 to 17 year old teenager, what's those sort of uh, motivating factors at that age that they're really focusing on in terms of a career? Um, mostly they are looking for um, excitement, um, looking for things that uh, have, have long-term prospects, uh, not so much having the same job for a long period of time, but somewhere where it can, they can move through the ranks. Uh, also well-paid uh, with lots of um, sort of add-ons, cars, phones, computers, that type of thing. So, um, But also uh, international travel or travelling around the country and meeting people is also, uh, for some students, uh, that's their interests. Certainly. And so we're talking about resource and funding, obviously, with the budget tomorrow. Could you give us an understanding of uh, sort of the playing field that you're on? Um, yes, we don't have any funding really for ag and hort education in terms of schools uh, from really any of the governmental agencies. So we don't, um, we're not in the New Zealand curriculum. So we have our own um, syllabus that we've written to sit aside the New Zealand curriculum. Um, we don't have any um, textbooks or universal apart, uh, curriculum areas apart from the achievement standards. So um, our, yeah, that's what we base a lot of our learning on. Um, but we have had a lot of support from primary sector, uh, so from um, 
yeah, industry. So we have had support from a lot of businesses such as Dairy NZ, um, um, yeah, Beef and Lamb, uh, Young Farmers, uh, and places like the Farmers Weekly who have helped us with the Ag and Ed program. Um, so we do have some um, sort of non-governmental places that help us out. But yeah, we are short on resources. And let's talk about that with Ag and Ed. And there's an exciting development that you're working on as well, utilising technology to bring that information uh, to your students. Uh, tell um, us about the Ag and Ed and the paper in particular and, and some of those resources you're building with Farmers Weekly. Yes, so um, I just had a conversation with Dean Williamson, who's very passionate about this area as well. And he was sort of saying, well, what can we help um, agricultural to horticultural teachers in New Zealand? And, and we... You know, this is not a sort of a new idea. They used to have um, these in all the major publications in the country, but it was more for other subjects rather than agriculture and horticulture. So, um, yeah, they come up with this Ag and Ed. I have a copy in this week's uh, set, uh, Farmers Weekly. And um, it's a series of activities that just on um, that the students or anyone can have a go at. So it's just linking the markets, um, you know, graphs on the different markets throughout the, the paper, um, looking at uh, bringing the students' opinions in. So, you know, there's a bit on you said. But it's also just a place where um, for teachers like myself can pick up and actually use in our classroom. So uh, this week, uh, today and tomorrow, my class is actually looking at the New Zealand lamb exports to the US, uh, mainly because because I'm looking at livestock growth and development and looking at particularly looking at markets. So um, yeah, it's great. It's great to have another resource that I don't have to make myself um, and have some you know, backup videos with that, um, that they have with their own farm story. So I can show the students the jobs and where sort of a job in marketing would be or how um, to analyze graphs, et cetera. So yeah, it's very exciting. It's just, sort of come off the bat. Um, this, I think this is the sixth one, so the last six weeks, and they're just putting together um, a, a Google Classroom uh, site as well so that all the answers um, can be uploaded in the activities so that students can continue to use them after the, pub, uh, the paper has you know, not been finished for that week. So yeah, so I can go back and use some of those activities later on. Kerry, can I just say on behalf of everyone listening and watching, um, thank you so much for everything that you tirelessly do. My heart is actually so full and warm from hearing what all that you have done without funding from our government into something that is so essential, an essential service in my mind. Uh, and it just sums up what I said at the start, that that's just the Kiwi way. We just get on and do it. We don't wait for permission and we just make it happen. So thank you so, so, so much from, from oh, all of us. Thank you very much, Sarah, yes. And I'd like to thank all the organisations that do help us um, and help us get resources together. So thank you very much. No worries. And I know the uh, ex-school teacher and Dean Williamson absolutely loves his involvement uh, in that. So that's Kerry Allen. She's the Secretary and Treasurer of the uh, Horticulture and uh, Agriculture Teachers Association. They're doing some absolutely amazing work. This is Sarah's Country.